what's going on? And the answer comes from how to magnetize a baby. <laughs> you start with a baby. The baby should be 9 to 12 weeks of age, and you sit face to face, 15 inches apart. You take a teaspoon of sugar, a cup of water, mix them together, and dump the baby's pacifier in the sugar water, and put it in the baby's mouth. Set a timer for three and a half minutes, and maintain eye contact until the timer rings. At that point, the baby is magnetized. You may leave the room. Come back into the room about 15 minutes later with a dozen other people, and what you discover is the baby ignores everyone. <laughs> except for you. The baby coos and gurgles and throws you a seductive shoulder, and the baby is in love with you. <laughs> By the way, this doesn't have to be your baby. Grandparents have been doing this with other people's babies for a long time. What's happening is the taste of sugar on the tongue triggers the release of opiates in the brain, which in turn triggers the release of dopamine, the feel-good chemical. And so all this raises the question, could foods really affect the brain? So why do we eat? When you ask anybody, why do you eat? They'll say, of course, I'm hungry. And I would suggest that is not the reason. You just had dinner, and now you're going to eat that. You weren't hungry. Or it's the middle of the afternoon, and you plunked quarters into the machine to have that. No, 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 that was not hunger. Or in the morning, you have one of those. Does that have to do with hunger? Or in the afternoon, you have one of those. Is this, this is not hunger. <laughs> what drives all of these things is dopamine. Dopamine is the brain chemical that wants to reward you. The cell on the left has little black dots. Those are dopamine molecules. They're in little vesicles that migrate into the cleft, and then they release the dopamine, and it swims across, and it attaches to the receptors on the other side of the cleft. And as it does, it creates a little feel-good sensation. So dopamine is your fun chemical. Hooray, I feel good. Well, it's made in the VTA, the ventral uh, tegmental area, and it then squirts out over the, to the nucleus accumbens, and nature put this in your brain. What for? As a reward for finding food, remember where this food is from, so you get a little dopamine when you find a good food source, or mating behavior. Um, the idea is that dopamine rewards you for things that keep you alive, food, or keep the species alive, mating. Yes, that's the biological system we are stuck with. However, it turns out that people have found ways to hijack dopamine. Alcohol does it. Nobody would have fermented grains if it didn't trigger a release of dopamine. Uh, tobacco does it. Cocaine and heroin will do it as well. And every drug of abuse, in one mechanism or another, increases dopamine activity, and that's why they are popular. And you can do brain scans. Researchers at McGill University gave people a drink while they were in a brain scanning device, and you can show that as the alcohol reaches your blood, the little pleasure areas in the brain start lighting up. And smoking will do the same thing. And food, not just any food. Certain foods that people really kind of feel stuck on, they stimulate areas of the brain too. Now, if you compare the parts of the brain that are stimulated by alcohol and those stimulated by our favorite junk foods, well, they're not quite the same, but they're right next to each other. So drugs and certain foods hijack your brain's dopamine system. That's the idea. Are you vulnerable? Some people more than others. And the first thing is genes. The second thing is emotions, and the third is situations. I want to walk you through all three of these. Genes, there, there's the dopamine receptor D2, DRD2, A1 allele. This is a gene your parents can give you. And here's what it does. This is the normal uh, brain structure where one neuron goes to the other neuron. But in some cases, there are people who have fewer receptors. Do you see the difference there? If there are not so many receptors, those little black dots, the little dopamine molecules go across, and if they don't find a receptor pretty soon, they vanish. And you didn't get much dopamine rush. And these people go through life 
feeling not quite as happy as other people. If you have that allele, that gene, then you are at risk for substance abuse, gambling, and overeating because all of these things trigger the release of dopamine. It's between 12 and 40% of US adults, depending on who you look at. And in our research, uh, one of our diabetes studies, I genotyped all of the participants. They were all there only because they had type 2 diabetes. And we found that 10% of them had the A1 allele from their mother and from their father. We call that homozygous. They got it from both. 39% had the A1 from one parent and A2, which is normal, from the other parent. And 51% 50, had A2, A2, which is, which is normal. That means you got plenty of dopamine. But anybody who's got that A1, they're at risk. And what was amazing was that these were people who were only there because we, they had type 2 diabetes, and we found nearly half of people with type 2 diabetes have this single gene, which led us to theorize Let's say you have a genetic predisposition toward diabetes. You could get it, you could not get it. What if you have another gene that means you're not gonna have very many dopamine receptors in your brain, and so you feel a little bit out of sorts and you discover that chocolate makes you feel better, or cheese, or meat, and overeating in general, and you start to gain weight, and then the diabetes genes kick in. Are you with me? So we have found in other studies the same thing, that this dopamine lack is driving the eating behavior and the diet-related diseases. Mm -hmm.